All right, everyone, this is the History of Gaming Lesson 2, Space War. All right, feel free to pause if the video is moving too quickly for you. All right, and at the end, I have a link that you guys can try if you want to try this game at home. So this guy featured on the left-hand side here is Steve Russell. He lived in Hartford, Connecticut from 1937, and he's still alive today. His father was an engineer, and his mother was a teacher. All right, so if you notice, a lot of these guys come from strong educational backgrounds with their parents, and Steve Russell's just another example of that. He ended up attending Dartmouth College from 1954 to 1958. After riding a cross-country train for the very first time in his life as a young boy, Russell develops a passion for model trains. Okay. This sparks his interest in electronics because he believes that he could incorporate or implement electronics into his model train sets to create better displays. <clears throat> While at MIT, his colleagues nicknamed him Steve the Slug Russell. Okay, and there he is right there, featured in the picture. This was because Russell was notorious for hating to start new projects, and he would give any excuse not to. So whenever he was assigned a project or a task, um, you know, he would drag his feet, he wouldn't start what he was supposed to do, and he would hold his team back. For example, the concept of space war had started in the summer of 1961, but by Christmas, Russell still did not code a single portion of the game. So as you can see, he's very sluggish in his work production. Russell joins the Tech Model Railroad Club. This is the team who ultimately comes up with the concept of space war. His team became so frustrated with his laziness and excuses, and his final excuse was that he did not possess the sine-cosine routines required to place and move his ships around the screen. So his team drove down to the DEC company headquarters hours upon hours of a car ride to go get these routines. They pick them up, drive them back to MIT, throw them down on Steve the Slug Russell's desk, and tell him to get to work. Out of excuses now, he begins to work on the project in late December. It took Slug almost one month to generate just a single moving dot on the screen. Okay, so he's taking a very long time with this process. Worried that moving an entire ship would take too much processing power, Russell realizes <clears throat> that since the points comprising the spaceship would always remain in the same relative position to each other, that he only needed to calculate the angle once per frame and then implement code that rotated the entire grid as necessary. Before long, Russell had designed the two ships and they were designed to look like a curvy Buck Rogers spaceship and a slender redstone rocket. They soon acquired the nicknames of Wedge and Needle. And you're gonna see why. So, here was the concept of designing the first plane to look like the Buck Rogers spaceship. Uh, a lot of students look at this and they say it looks very similar to the Futurama spaceship. And then here's your Redstone rocket, which is actually based off of the United States rocket. So here's Wedge, and here's Needle. Russell spent nearly six months creating the first version of the game. The two ships could accelerate, rotate clockwise ro or rotate counterclockwise when the player flipped one of three toggle switches. Flipping a fourth toggle switch allowed the player to fire torpedoes that would destroy the opposing ship if they made contact. Originally, there was a random chance that the torpedo would uh, be a dud. They wanted to make this game realistic and sometimes if you shot a torpedo or a missile, it wouldn't explode but Russell changed them to be 100% reliable after negative user feedback. 
So when you try this game uh, at the end of the class, okay, you're going to understand that, you know, it is very difficult to navigate your ship and shoot your missiles. So in, even if you get the chance to line up a missile or a torpedo and hit your opponent and then they didn't explode, you know, it would be, it would be very frustrating. So obviously they had a lot of negative user feedback, so they turned the torpedoes to 100% rely. As explained by Russell, the game required two players due to a lack of computing power to craft an AI opponent. They had invested so much computing power in the functionality of the game itself that they did not have any left to create an AI opponent. Russell realized early in development that without any background objects, it was impossible to tell how the two ships were moving relative to each other when they were traveling at slow speeds. Russell ends up solving this problem by putting random dots of light on the screen, just like this. Okay. And they were supposed to represent a star field. But this inelegant solution, it wasn't beautiful, it was not satisfying to the eye, and it definitely did not satisfy his team. So what they did was they extracted data from the American Ephemeris and Nautical Almanac to actually recreate the night sky between 22 and a half degrees north and 22 and a half degrees south. So actually the layout of the blips of light in the back are an actual star field that exists in the sky, or in space, we should say. Influences. So they were influenced by several things to create this game, okay? The first one is the team's love of sci-fi, specifically novels by E.E. E. Smith. During this time period, America and the USSR were engaged in the space race. The space race was a competition in the exploration of space between the United States and the Soviet Union. The space race included the exploration of outer space using rocket technology with artificial satellites to send animals and humans into space and to ultimately land people on the moon. The space race started as the Russians developed rocket technology and launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. The space race ended in 1975 with the U.S. Apollo space project. Pop culture was heavily influenced by space, with Star Wars and Star Trek being very popular at the time. Space War was developed on the DEC PDP-1. The game pitted two human players against each other, controlling one spaceship while firing missiles. There's a giant star in the center of the screen that created a large, a large hazard for the spacecrafts. If run into your spacecraft, uh, you will explode. The game was eventually distributed with the new DEC computers and traded throughout the primitive new internet. Okay, so if you look here, you could try this game for yourself. Just type this link into your uh, address bar on your computer. And if you'd like, you could type these links in and watch them as well. Thanks for watching.